Hello everybody, this is Lino Tadros. I'm excited for this video. This video hopefully will break a little bit of a myth going on out there. Uh, most of you know from inside of the Cyfinity CMS, uh, we cannot really create a .NET Core page. You'll have to create a .NET Core instance and from there you'll be able to create your .NET Core pages. Well, that's a little bit of a myth. Uh, you can actually create .NET Core pages directly from the CMS itself without even having a, a .NET Core instance running. So let's go ahead and, and take a look and see how that could happen. And that can save you a lot of time if you'd like to prepare for something for other people to actually start manipulating the .NET Core pages as well. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So right here behind me, you can see in Visual Studio, I have a regular a CMS 15 point something. Um, and it's running on .NET Framework 4.8. This is not a .NET Core or anything like that. And I would like to go ahead and create a way for me to create a .NET Core uh, page. I can do it in a lot of different ways. I choose to do it using, let's say, a widget, so you can see how this is done from a widget as well. So I'm gonna right click on the name of my project and we'll say add, we'll go to Sitefinity, and in here we'll click on widgets. I'm using the V6 uh, free extension that uh, you can install in Visual Studio as well. All right, from that point on, we'll go ahead and bring in that dialog, and in here we'll give it a name. We'll call it, for instance, Core Page Widget. You can call it whatever you want, and we'll say OK. That will take a few seconds, and it will generate a controller. Yeah, let's go ahead and reload the project. But now when I go to my MVC, you will notice under controller, I have my Core Page Widget controller. I have a model, which I'm really not going to use in this specific demo. And in the views, I will have my own folder for core page widget that has my index of CSS, HTML for the razor syntax. All right, let's go ahead and open up the controller, which is an important piece. Like I said, I'm not going to use a model for this one, so I'm going to delete all that. I'm going to leave the message even though I'm not going to use it, but that's the hello world that comes automatically from the system when you create that using the V6. And in the view, I'm not going to be passing any models. I'm just going to return the index uh, as is. Great. So at this point, I just need to put some uh, some code in here, or even better yet, instead of doing it on the index, let's go ahead and create another public action result. We'll say public uh, action result. And in here, we'll call it core page, for instance, okay? And we'll go ahead and implement this guy. The only thing I have to remember is to return the view. Let's return the view and core page. Copilot is very nice for that. It helps you out finishing up that um, that code if you want. All right. So I'm not going to actually go through exactly what it takes in CMS to create a page programmatically. That's something I went through already in other um, in other videos. You can actually take a look at that in my library here on YouTube. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in some code uh, to show you what exactly it will take to do this in CMS itself, not in .NET Core, all right? So let's, for instance, take a look at this action results for the core page. I'm creating two variables, one to get the GUID, a brand new GUID, and one is the name of the new page. I'm gonna call it core page from CMS, okay? Hopefully you're familiar with all the different managers uh, inside of Sitefinity. This one is using the page manager. I'm gonna get that, latch on to the one built into Sitefinity itself. And then I want to find out where is the root of the front end because there is multiple roots. So I'm going to actually get the site initializer, which is the constants file that contains the GUID for my front end. And that will be my parent. And the most important part is the create page in here. That's the API out of the page manager. I need to pass it three things where the parent will be. And that is the root of the front end. The GUID that I just created all the way at the top. And whether it's a standard page, is a redirect, it's a a page group, whatever it is. In my case, I want to create a regular standard page. Uh, again, the page inside Finity is made out, made out of two different objects, the page node and the page data. I'll start with the page node, give it the name that I gave it, the title. And then from the page node, I can get a pointer to the page data, like you can see in here. And then from the page data, I can actually do a lot of things, uh, change the HTML title, do whatever I want. If you want to find out the dozens and dozens of different properties, just go after the dot and do a control space on the keyboard and you'll see tons of stuff that you can use during cache duration, cache output, comments, drafts, description. There is tons of things that you can do, but we're gonna leave that alone and leave that for you. And at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and save the changes. That's the first time it will actually hit the database as a draft. And then we will do the three lines of code that hopefully everybody is familiar with, how to publish something inside of Sitefinity. So we'll use the workflow manager, we'll pass the IDs, 
and the type of the page node and we'll go ahead and publish it sounds good oh let me take that line out that's from the previous code there you go it should look like that all right perfect so if I run this code right now, I'm going to create a very simple uh, using the default of the templates and everything. And it would be a, 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 an MVC page pretty much. That's, that's pretty much about it. So what can I change in here to actually make sure that my page that I'm creating is .NET Core. Even though I'm running this from inside of an MVC page on the MVC and the CMS system in 4.8. That's why I left the line here in the middle. So there are two things that you will need to do. Okay, The first one is to set a new property called render so let me bring in the two lines of code and I'll explain them in here for you so I'm going to put them right here in the middle and that's going to be based on the page data by the way so the first one is the page data and I'm going to typecast it with something called irenderer common data as you can see it comes from the Telerik Infinity page model alrighty and I'm going to use the render and the render has to be equal to this uh, string in here net core with a capital n and a capital c the other one is which template do you want to use usually when you say template name and again use the i renderer common data you say i want to use the default which right now as of today uh, there is only one that comes out of the box and that's the default one as well the question is what if i have my own cs html that i've created that's not a problem let me bring in a comment in here just in case you'd like to see how it will look like so I'm going to be bringing in that. So if you created, for instance, your own template um, in the resource package, for instance, or I'm sorry, not the resource package, but in the uh, in the views under shared, for instance, you can actually go ahead and create a custom template, Lino template, Lino layout. Just remember for .NET Core, the name of the template has to have the word template or layout in it. In the beginning, in the middle, at the end, somehow the word template or layout. If you just call it custom.cshtml, it will not work. Just remember that. So if that's the case, instead of using default, you'll say template name and pass the name of the template without the .cshtml. Believe it or not, this is the only thing you'll have to do uh, just to set up the render equal net core and the template name to default or whatever you have created um, if it's already available uh, and it has been uploaded to the cshtml. So these are things that you will need to be worried about to make this happen. Hopefully it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and run this and see how it works. All right. Uh, before building, let's go ahead and create a view for this guy so we can see that happen. I'm going to go under the views for core page widget right there. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new CSS HTML file. We'll say add and we'll create a new MVC5 page and we'll call this one. It has to be called the same way core page. It has to be like the name that I'm passing in here core page. There you go. And inside of the CSS HTML, we'll just put something very simple. We'll say a div and we'll say new core page created sounds good excellent let's go ahead and save all that we close this guy save everything and let's go ahead and right click on the name of the projects we'll build it and once it's done i'm going to go ahead and run it and i'll show you how it looks now when we run it from the cms all right it compiled it's a brand new site so i'm going to go to the back end and we'll log in And in here, we'll go ahead and create uh, maybe a new page. This page is going to be, of course, a CMS page. So I'm going to say uh, pages. We'll create a brand new page. We'll call it, for instance, the home page. Let's say continue. And we will use a bootstrap one. Let's say we'll use this one, for instance. That's fine. And from that point on, I would like to find the new widget that I just created called core page um, from CMS. And let's see if we can see that. All right, we got it. Let's uh, collapse this and there is the custom widgets one and there is my core page widget that I created. Let's go ahead and create this and put it here in the middle. Uh, I don't need to get to anything as far as edit or anything like that. Just leave it alone. We'll go ahead and publish it. Create a .NET. That's what I added to my index of CSS HTML. But I'm interested in the other route, the other one that I will say slash uh, core page, for instance, to be able to get to. So now that I publish this, let's go ahead and run it and see if I can create a page in .NET Core from inside of the CMS, which would be really awesome. Let's go ahead and view this guy. There is my slash home. It's compiling it for the first time. And there is my index of CSHTML file. But if I go after the slash home, I'll say core page, and let's push enter and see what happens. Immediately new core page created which is awesome now let's go back and see if that's true let's refresh this page 
and you will notice that core page from CMS has been created. It has the new editor on it. Of course, I cannot edit it from here because I'm in the CMS, but the creation of the pages and assign them to templates can happen from inside of the CMS itself. It's just, of course, to do anything with this core page from CMS, you'll have to have an instance in, uh, in the .NET Core instance to be able to deal with that. If you click on that, you'll get the regular message that says, page cannot be displayed, enable .NET Core render, um, or contact your administrator. But at least the creation of the pages can happen from that. So it is a myth that you cannot create a .NET Core page from inside of the CMS. You can, there is a little bit of a trick to it, like you can see, but it's poss possible to do that as well. All right, thank you. Hopefully this was useful. And I'll see you again soon in another video.